Hello, hello, my friends. This is Dr. Sarah Lobisco, and today we have a very stimulating topic. Hopefully not too stimulating because we want to stay calm and rested and relaxed and rejuvenated. Today I want to talk to you about the polyvagal theory. Now this is piggybacking on my previous video, which was on the vagus nerve. So no worries, I'm just going to go through a little bit of what was discussed last time, and then if you want more details, I will leave a link in the video description for that video, as well as for additional resources and references and descriptions that you can check out at your leisure. Okay, so it's important to understand that this polyvagal theory is currently being applied to trauma is specifically post-traumatic stress disorder. And there's been a lot of trauma and anxiety in the world. So understanding this, and I'm gonna bring in a little bit on how essential oils can also maybe be implemented into this theory to also help assist with mind, body, emotional, and psychological, as well as physiological health will be very helpful for, I think, a lot of people who are struggling today looking for different answers. All right, so let's get started. Let's just do a little bit of a review first on this popular 10th cranial nerve. Now, you've probably heard of the vagus nerve. It is becoming quite the catchphrase in the health media sphere here, and it's for good reason. This vagus nerve is one of the most complex, the most complicated nerves in our body. It is vital for many critical functions. It directly influences the heart, our digestion, our brain, and our lungs, all very critical things. It's called the vagus nerve because it's based on the vagrant word, which means wandering. All right, so it's the wandering nerve, which predominantly guides our rest and digest part of our nervous system, known as the parasympathetic nervous system. So this means that an optimally functioning vagus nerve is going to allow the body to replenish, to repair, to perform its subconscious functions with ease. So we don't have to think about how we're breathing, if our heart's beating, I mean, preferentially, right? Most people don't unless there's an issue. Uh, and then we can just go on about our day and be a, in a state of ease. Now, if someone is in sympathetic nervous system, they become more aware of these bodily processes, right? Our heart begins to beat faster, our breathing increases, our respiration actually goes up at a higher level. This is when we are in a state of fight or flight, which is in, I wouldn't say opposition, but balances out our parasympathetic nervous system. And we need that sympathetic nervous system to be in a state of alert because when we're in threat and needs to turn on, we need to have our nervous system pump up so that we can escape stress or predators or whatever the threat is at the time. Now there's various triggers such as stress, digestive issues, trauma, pain, heat, and various other factors which can cause a vagal response. And this is a kind of stimulation to the vagus nerve that can actually lead to symptoms and an imbalance in the nervous system. Now, the vagus nerve can also become damaged, and that can lead to various disorders that impair these autonomic functions. People can have digestive issues, heart issues, various problems. The good news is there are practices that we can do, such as diet movement, mindfulness, embracing social connection, and music therapy. These have been shown in some studies to optimize our vagal tone and to enhance our resilience. And we can directly, indirectly, I should say, assess how well-toned our vagus nerve is based on the fluctuations of our heart rate variability. And this is also can be done by based on symptoms that we're experiencing. Now, if you want to learn more, that's the basic overview of what you're going to need for what I'm going to talk about next with the polyvagal theory. But be sure to check it out in the video description, the link to the first video on the vagus nerve. Now let's talk a little bit about the polyvagal theory, how it relates to PTSD, and how essential oils might be able to weave into this. And I'm going to touch upon that now, 
But in an upcoming video, I hope to go into more details on specific essential oils in the vagus nerve. Because again, this is a critical nerve. If we can get our bodies to relax and be in a state of restoration, all the better, right? For our physiology and for our psychology. So the polyvagal theory, it was introduced in 1994 by a man named Stephen Porges. And it's based on the role that the vagus nerve has in regulating our emotions, our social connections, and our response to fear. Today, like I said, it is a new understanding, or it is being used for a new understanding of how to treat trauma. It's scientifically the exploration of the neurological, the psychological, and the physiological response of the nervous system to either threats or to safety. Now, when we feel safe, this leads to the downregulation of that fight or flight response, right? We're, we're feeling safe. We can relax. We are in a predominantly parasympathetic nervous system mode. And when we're there in this state of calm and we're looking around and there's no threats, our cat's purring in the background, maybe who my cat is, <laughs> or whatever furry friends you have or don't have, whatever it is, you're feeling calm, you're relaxed, your body can enter the state of homeostasis, balance, where it can allow itself to be healed and to rejuvenate and to support growth and health and restoration. This is a form of regulation. It's based on this constant communication between what our brainstem is saying, right? And it's picking it up from our peripheral organs. You know, is this, is something aching down here? How am I feeling? Is there any pain? And then our brainstem will communicate, everything looks okay. Like, you know, looking around the environment and finding if there's any threat. This constant bi-directional response is happening and that'll determine the level of safety that we feel. So we could go into a little bit of a soapbox and another tangent here about how if someone's in chronic pain and all that, but let's just say someone is feeling safe and they're feeling comfortable. When they are in that way, it's easier to enter into constructive social relationships. Just like little kids, when they have secure attachments with their parents, will go out forth and venture, feel that they have a secure home base to come back into to, so they can go out and explore. Similar, it's a, it's a biological drive, right, from our vagus nerve, this polyvagal theory states. Now, it's interesting because if we look at this from a neuroanatomy and a neurophysiology perspective, not just on a psychological ex perspective, we can see why maybe some of our treatments for trauma and anxiety and some other mood disorders aren't fully, aren't fully completing and helping people get into a state of remission and happiness and joyfulness and freedom, right? Because we need to look at all of these different pieces. So this this theory is bringing this core sense of safety that we need to feel first to have these nourishing social relationships in order to thrive and not feel threatened and to go ahead and be growth, not just as a person, but also for our biological growth and health. So I believe that is a very fascinating concept. And there are clinical applications to this. Now, actually, whereas Mr. Porges actually founded this theory, there was a woman named Deb Dana that she put these applications into the therapy books. And she applied these concepts of Porges into th and his three key principles, which are hierarchy, neuroception, and co-regulation into therapeutic exercises. And let me just go over those key principles because they're important to know when we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. So first of all, if we're looking at hierarchy, that relates to three nervous system states. We have the ventral vagal state, which is the state of safety, where we can show up, communicate, and connect with others. We have the sympathetic state. Now that is your fight or flight energy state. It's mobilized for survival in dangerous situations. We have our dorsal vagal state. Now that's the state of shutdown. Somebody feels overwhelmed, they're numbed, they've collapsed, they're initiating this protective mode. Kind of think about when the dog or your kitty, it feels threatened and they go into the corner, curl up, and they're just, everything is just in this little ball of protection. 
Now, neuroception is a term that is used to refer to how our nervous system scans the environment. Remember, we have this bi-directional communication between our brainstem and our organs, and it's scanning the environment and it's looking for if we're safe or if we're in danger. And that determines this, these hierarchy states of ventral vagal, sympathetic, or dorsal vagal. There's this concept of co-regulation, which is the biological drive to connect with others, our tribes, in order to survive. And this persists throughout our life. So we have these different principles, where hierarchy, nociception, co-regulation, that help explain trauma and emotional states based on this nervous system hierarchy, right? Based on these three states. So if we say that someone appears to be stuck in a dysfunctional relationship or frozen, that might literally be true. They might be in this dorsal state where they are in a state of overwhelm, collapse, and shutdown because they're trying to feel protected. And when someone's in that state, it's hard to psychologically or cognitively talk to someone in that state because their nervous system has shut down. So anxiety from trauma, so something such as PTSD, that can be related to a sympathetic nervous system. So let's kind of look at how this relates to the polyvagal theory and how it's being applied to PTSD today. So when a traumatic experience occurs, the parasympathetic nervous system is overridden by the fight or flight system, right? The sympathetic nervous system. I think we were kind of comfortable with that at this point, and this is to protect us. Now it's adaptive and it's needed in acutely dangerous situations. However, if we're chronically overstimulated, it can become maladaptive when we're in safe environments, right? Like if I'm overstimulated, but I'm in a safe environment and I'm continually overreacting to what somebody says or what people are doing or the environment and my physiology and my mental health, right, is going to be suffer. And so are my social relationships. And that's what this theory is saying is is happening with someone with PTSD. So they define it as post-traumatic stress disorder, a maladaptive debilitating neuropsychiatric condition that involves a dysregulation of the normal fear response. Now, if we look at clinical applications of the polyvagal theory, it's gonna focus on this autonomic state that we wanna be in as a mediator of this mental and physical health. And if we can shift people away from this sympathetic dominance and into this ventral vagal state, remember that is a state where someone feels safe and protective. It's like that little kid having that secure base, being able to go out and explore and feel okay. If we can shift someone back into a ventral vagal state, it can move from this neurophysiological state of disconnect to a healed reconnective state and homeostasis in the body and even improve social relationships, which can further decrease somebody's chance of feeling threatened and keep them in that state. So there's different interventions that are being used today clinically. There's vagal nerve stimulation. There's also meditative practices that have been studied for applications of this polyvagal theory. Now, according to the Institute of Functional Medicine, they did a beautiful overview of this polyvagal theory and post-traumatic stress disorder. They said that studies such that contemplative practices characterized by attentive regulation of breathing can activate the vagus nerve. So that makes sense. We know that the vagus nerve is related to breathing. So if we're being conscious of that breath, it can increase this respiratory sinus, sinus uh, activation. And according to the polyvagal theory, it actually activates the ventral vagal complex, that which can potentially promote PTSD recovery. That was a mouthful. But basically what I was saying is if we do these meditative practices, it can induce this ventral vagal feeling of safety state of the vagus nerve, and that can make somebody click out and that simply click out of trauma, but can help move somebody out of trauma, right? They can they can move out of this traumatic nervous system, sympathetic state, move into the state of calm and start to rebalance and enter the state of homeostasis, which can bring them out of this trauma state and bring about some healing. Now, it's important for me to note to you guys that this is still not actually a consensus 
a consensus agreed upon psychological intervention, there is still no clear consensus on biologists if the dorsal brainstem or the dorsal ventral centers, which we've been talking about, the ventral nervous center, the vagus nerve and how they interact, is related to the heart rate of somebody that's been under psychological dissociation or trauma. So it's still in its studied states for post-traumatic stress disorder, but it looks very, very hopeful. And there's been some pretty impressive results so far. So that is a polyvagal theory. It relates to the vagus nerve. We talked about some clinical applications and specifically related to PTSD. So weave in essential oils for a little second here, and then we'll dive deeper in a follow-up video. But as far as essential oils and aromatherapy, we know, guys, that essential oils induce relaxation, they calm the mind and body, and they enhance mood. Those are all things related to your parasympathetic nervous system tone, right? So along with the psychological effects on our biochemistry, our neurological signaling, our brain patterning, and physiology, essential oils impact those all and calm this automatic, autonomic state of arousal. This means that they can likely impact directly vagal tone, and they combine perfectly with many holistic modalities and mental health support, even conventional mental health support. So we'll dive deeper into that later on, but I just wanted to touch into that, bring in some things that most of my viewers are probably already using, because if you're following me, you've probably had some introduction to essential oils by now. And let's just step back. Let me give you, let's all take a vagal deep breath. And let me give you a little summary of the vagus nerve, the polyvagal theory and holistic interventions for trauma, specifically PTSD that we talked about today. So the vagus nerve is a key regulator of your parasympathetic nervous system, which calms the body. It sets the autonomic subconscious processes in our body that are critical for everyday functioning. When we're in a state of calm and relaxation, our minds and our bodies can heal, they can restore. When we're in a heightened state of stress and stimulation from past trauma or from sympathetic nervous system override, our parasympathetic nervous system gets closed down and our vagal tone can become dysregulated. As a result, our nervous system becomes maladaptive. And in response to everyday life, it can negatively impact our health, psychology, and social relationships. The polyvagal theory is a scientific study of the neurological, psychological, and physiological effects of feeling safe. So when one is free of threat, the nervous system can go ahead and relax, allow balance in the mind and body to enter a state of homeostasis, which can support growth, health, restoration, and relationships. Mindfulness, vagal nerve stimulation, and essential oils can be used as clinical applications to calm the vagus nerve and to assist one in healing from trauma. So there you have it. I hope that this video was helpful, my friends, and I hope that you can take this information and use it accordingly to assist you in feeling more calm and to reset your vagal tone. Please, 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 if you find this helpful, I would really superly appreciate it if you go ahead and spread this uh, information to people who need to hear it. We really are in a state of chronic fight and flight right now, and it would be so helpful if we could have tools that are easily accessible and have this education available for people so that they can calm their minds and bodies. We can start building healthy, constructive relationships with people in a calm, centered state. I think we all could use a little bit of that right now. And a little drop of essential oil here and there is all the better. So go ahead and feel free to share the video, feel free to share the article, like this video so more people can see it and it can get up the algorithm for people to see. I would appreciate that deeply and I appreciate you deeply. Thank you for your time. If you want to learn more about me or my work, be sure to check out the video description and some of my free offer offerings and resources for you, my friends. And I will be back again with the next video super soon. In the meantime, please take good care of yourself. You are very, very worth it. I'll talk to you soon.